Hey, everybody, Jen Hatmaker here, your host of the For the Love podcast. You guys, welcome to the show. I am enjoying this series even more than I thought I was going to. Like, I I knew I was going to enjoy this. Uh, The team and I have been talking about doing this series for probably a year, but I am enjoying it. 10 times more than I even guessed. Um, We're in a series right now called For the Love of Pastimes. God, we really workshopped that word. I don't even know if we found the right word, but we are talking to makers and creators and innovators who took their pastime, if you will, or their hobby or their art or their craft, and they have built it into like a beautiful space, um, a powerful place in the world. Um, in most of their cases, a full-time job, um, from something that just started from the, for the love of it. And so I've always been inspired by creators and innovators. And so talking to my guests in this series has just, it's lit a little match in me, um, the, the part of me that's also creative and likes to build things out of, for me, mostly words. Um, but I'm finding so much to, um, learn from my guests and I'm inspired by them and I feel connected to them. And, um, today is no exception. I, I, you're going to just really enjoy this episode. Our guest today is Jamie Karowski. Okay. And she's just a force of creative energy and light and vision and inner, like her enthusiasm is palpable and um, what she has learned, what she's risen from her belief in herself and in her work is so strong. It like comes through and it um, it's contagious. Um, Okay. So Jamie, she was a teacher um, for years. She was in education from Virginia beach who kind of literally stumbled into her art. I I can't wait for you to hear the origin story of it. Um, um, Her brand is called She Makes. Um, She makes dot art. And she calls it an accidental business, which is a true story. And so um, among other things, she makes these beautiful, like one of a kind driftwood art pieces that are burned with the words that, as she says, live in her bloodstream. Um, words of love and literature and um, and nature and resilience and a touch of Jersey sass, which is where she's from. Um, It's all just so original. It's so unique, but it's also powerful. Um, Jamie's also the co-founder of the Make Her Collective alongside Aaron from Blair Family Woodcraft and Kate from Modern Hoopla. And so the three of them created, and we'll talk about this, this amazing community of support and resources for women makers. Um, You know, I love this. I I am such a fan of women collaborating inside their work, inside their craft, inside their business. Um, I do not believe in scarcity. And so like us podcast people, Jamie has, and I appreciated her candor around this too, walked through some extremely difficult things because life is like this. Life is like this for all of us. Um, Hardships, a lot of us know all too well, a really painful divorce, um, health issues, all of it, really. I mean, she knows she's been there. She, she is us. She sees us. So um, if you need to sum up Jamie in just a few short sentences, just let, this is what her Instagram bio says. (laughs) She makes driftwood pom-poms, poems, and pictures. She makes it awkward. She makes a spectacle. She makes art. (laughs) And you guys listen, in case you need to believe in a little magic today, when we reached out to Jamie to see if she would like to be a guest on this podcast for this series, um, she told us that two separate friends of hers had just sent her our grief episode with Sal and M back from the elephant in the room series. Um, Jamie told us it was like literally perfect timing. She was struggling with some really big changes in her life. Um, And in her words, her wonderful friends um, felt her grief somehow and felt the need to reach out to help inspire her to step out of grief and back into sharing her words. And they were able to give her a place to light up and talk about how she planned to share the power of words through art, poetry, and workshops. And so I love that. I just love that. Um, 
the cyclical nature of what it means to be in a community of women and how we just continue to serve one another and learn from one another and inspire each other. It's just the best. It's like the best there is. And so um, Jamie sent me a custom piece that I'm going to talk about at the end of this episode. And it's just so beautiful. It's so gorgeous. I, you're going to want to, this would be an excellent episode to watch over on YouTube because several times over the course of this interview, Jamie holds up some of her work so you can see what it looks like. Um, and her tools that she uses, all kinds of stuff. And so that's over on my YouTube channel. Um, if you want to watch us talk through and kind of get a real feel for her energy in the world, because you're going to love her. Um, I'm just delighted to have met her. So happy to have her on the show. And I think you're going to be inspired today. So uh, without any further ado, um, please enjoy this conversation with a beautifully creative Jamie Karowski. Jamie, I am like so delighted to meet you and so happy to see you. I'm so happy to have you on the show. I'm, I can't wait for my like listeners to meet you and to see the beautiful stuff you're doing in the world. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you. For oh my gosh. Me and hearing me and seeing me. Mm. My story. <laughs> yes, indeed. That's what we do for one another. Right. Okay. Jamie, I have already told my listeners just a little bit about who you are. But before we kind of get drilled down into what it is that you are creating and how you got to that space in your life, um, can you just talk a little bit about um, who you are? Like, where are you in the world? Who are your people? Um, kind of what, what is the base, what, what's the basics of Jamie? The, the umbrella I stand yes. under. Hmm. That is a humongous question. Mm. Um, but Above all, I think the word audacity stands up, like floats above me at all times. Um, mm. I live in audacity. I inspire audacity. I hope uh, encourage it in all the things. I'm I'm about words. All about the words that um, create. All the words that have to come through you so that you mm. can rest emotionally. Um, as a writer, it is a necessity for me to get the words out. Uh, and, and as a teacher to encourage writing, uh, and vulnerability and saying what you need to say. So like just the audacity to be creative, to speak what you need to speak to the people that need to hear it. Mm. And then, and then I burn it into driftwood like that, Mm. that magically happened in my life as a place to put them all. Mm. We're definitely going to get to that. Um, Cause people are like, I, I burn it into driftwood. I don't know what yeah, that means. What? We're going to get there. <laughs> listener hang yeah. in. Um, tell me like where you live and can you kind of give us the, the bones of your um, kind of your story arc? This sure. is, yeah. Uh, I love that. Like tell your story, your life story in a minute. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's easy. It's easy. Up in Jersey. Uh, yeah. So the story of my life in a minute would include what ends up on my art. So that's kind of cool how it connects. So sure. grew up in Jersey. So some of my art has a little bit of sass. I went to school at WVU in West Virginia. Mm. So it has the love of the West and the mountains. I did AmeriCorps in New Mexico and traveled out West with mm. two of my girlfriends after college for a year. And the West has my heart. And so a lot of my quotes that I burn are from that. Then that's when I ended up teaching in Northern Virginia, where my love of teaching writing and inspiring teachers to love Mm. teaching writing um, grew. And then I ended up in Virginia Beach. I was a military wife for a little while, for a minute there. And throughout all that, I was an artist. Like I was raised by a long line of artists. My mom's oh. a professional artist. My dad was mm. an art teacher. My yeah. grandfather was a neon sign maker. So really? Art, oh, art, whoa. Yeah. Okay. It's, so it's in your bones. It's in the bones. My cousin, yeah. my everybody in my family is, is somehow related to art. Mm. And so in Virginia Beach is when I became a mama. Uh, I have two kids um, that are hilarious and mm. emotionally brilliant, if you ask me, because I'm at 47 trying to like learn these things and they like know them. No, I, I know. know Isn't it weird? How old I'm are like, they? Can I take credit for this? No, I know. 12. I don't think, 
Uh-huh. Yeah. I have a 12-year-old daughter and a 17-year-old yeah. son. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've got those ages and north of them too. And or I've got 17 and north, but isn't it crazy how where they're at at their stage in life? When I think back to my 17-year-old self, what the <laughs> I didn't even have a I didn't even have a deep thought. Yeah. I didn't know what was going on in the world. I didn't have my own worldview. Mm-hmm. I didn't even have my own opinions. Um, I wasn't a critical thinker. I, I mean, I was just like I, I, I reading Teen Beat, you know. Yeah. Um, and so I, it, they're pretty impressive. This next generation. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and the advocacy that they have. And no, yeah, they care. Brilliant. Yeah, they care. They're out there. They do not give an f. They are yeah. like. Uh, it's going to be exciting to watch what they do. I'm taking a detour. Okay. That's just a little no, PSA. Like everybody listening, your kids are little, listen to us. We're yeah. telling you these kids are growing up into something special. We promise. They are. Yeah. I, I speak in wormhole. So that's. that's yeah. Okay, good, I good. So we can do that. Great. Right, perfect. Yes. Okay. I, I, it's, it's hard not to. Yes. So, okay, so you had then, the babies. Mm-hmm. Then I was a stay at home mom for a little bit. And I tried to, I was a potter for a little bit. I was a photographer for a little bit. Um, and then my divorce happened and it was yeah. ugly and it was awful yeah. and mm. I was broken. Mm. The kids were broken. Uh, and that's mm. when I, I don't know how much I'm getting into this, but that's when I had a stroke. You don't know. Uh, I, this is yeah. everything I want to hear about. Can I yeah. ask you something real quickly? How old were they? I'm trying to place this in your timeline. Mm. How it's, old were the kids? They were around like three and oh. seven. Oh, they were little. little. This is yeah. about eight, nine years ago. So I divorce and then a stroke. Yeah. I mean, I don't know yeah. what to say. Yeah. And I was, te- so I, I had stayed home with them for seven years, mm. which I didn't think I was going to go back. I was going to be a photographer, Jamie. And, um, mm. because of the divorce, I had to go back into of teaching course. and the stress of that, like the shock to my system, because it's not, that's not a job you can just go oh, no. to. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. You don't phone in teaching and it no. doesn't end at three. I was teaching and my daughter, I was like, she was like three or so. And I had to put her in daycare and oh, just the heartbreak of that. Yeah. And um, I left my home that I raised them in. Yes. Because uh, I knew I had to be the one to make a home somewhere else. Like I, I would be able to do that. Um, and the financial like risk of being a, a single mom school teacher. Like mm. that's crazy to me. Totally. So my kids, we were all broken. I was scared. Uh, and I was, it was SOL season, which is our standardized test here. It was just like the perfect storm of yeah. stress. And so the stroke happened and you know, it's like, if you don't pay attention and take mm. care of yourself, your body oh my gosh. will do it for you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Jamie, I, I don't know if you know this, but, um, when my, I'm a year and a half into my like life fall apart phase mm. and, um, I was walking around with such catastrophic blood pressure. Um, before I paid attention to it, I kept telling people my heart was broken because it hurt. Mm-hmm. Turns out it, I was literally hurting. Like I had catastrophic blood pressure. It wasn't a yeah. broken heart. It was, I'm about to have a stroke. Yeah. And my doctor was like, I, this has been so dangerous. You just walking around like this for this long. So you are right. Our bodies will raise every red flag. And if we don't pay attention, it'll re our bodies will reach their limits. So I am like, so identifying with what you're saying right now. Were you, where were you when you had your stroke? Were you by oh yourself? Gosh. I was, uh, I was home alone. Oh my gosh. And woke up and it was one of the, I was still like new to my house and new to, are my kids here? Like, I, oh. you know, when you wake up and you're like, oh my God, am I, <laughs> are they here? Or are they at their dad's? Like, and mm. I was alone and I couldn't feel my arm at Ugh. all. Mm. And I thought it had just fallen asleep Yeah, and it wouldn't come back. I actually went to school Oh gosh. And went to the nurse. I like drove with my left hand. It was weird. I'm like, something's wrong. And she's like, you probably just pinched a nerve. It was, mm. I went through the end of the school year. I eventually found out through like six doctor's appointments, finally got an MRI. Yeah. Um, and I had had a stroke. I <laughs> can't. From a hole in my heart, literally. Oh. Um, mm. I had from mm. birth, that is, was the, the, the stress plus that. Yeah. Yeah. And so 
I have some residual like uh, PTSD, I guess, not to downplay that word, if that's not appropriate, but like, sometimes I wake up and my arms asleep and I'm like, oh. it freaks me out. Of course, like, of course it does. So fear is something I'm, I like to say I'm a recovering fearaholic, but mm. it creeps sometimes. So that, mm. you know, still waking up alone and like, uh, mm. am I okay? <laughs> yeah. But yeah. yeah. So I, that's another soapbox. I'm an advocate for the audacity to have self-care because yeah. we live in a world where if you stop, you're lazy. And I will yeah. not have that. I will not. And self-care yeah. is not selfish. And, and that's right. It's that's a big soapbox for me. Uh-huh. We're talking to Jamie today, who is so lovely. And of course, one of the things she has done is to start a small biz with her beautiful and innovative driftwood art. And I love this. And watching small business owners channeling their visions into the world. But it can be tough to be a small business owner. There are so many layers. Creators just want to create, but you also have to manage the actual business part. That's where a service like stamps.com can be in your corner if you're shipping out a bunch of stuff. Um, We use it in Jen Hatmaker Land for absolutely everything. Because not only is stamps.com incredibly convenient, It's also cost effective. You have access to all the USPS and UPS services right from your laptop. And when you use stamps.com to mail and ship, you get access to exclusive discounts and great rates on shipping to the tune of up to 86% off. So whether you're an office sending invoices or an Etsy shop or selling from Shopify or Amazon or eBay or whatever, stamps.com has it handled. All you need is your computer and printer. That's it. No special supplies or equipment. Start mailing and shipping with stamps.com and keep more money in your pocket every day. Sign up with promo code for the love for a special offer that includes a four week trial plus free postage and a digital scale and no long term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page and enter code for the love. Parents, we can all use a little help from our friends and parents of tweens and teens. If you know, you know, this is especially true because they're maniacs. God bless them. This particular age group has its own set of challenges and bumps and roadblocks to navigate. And it all just feels like a lot because it is. That's why I developed a me course to guide you through this season that's jam packed with my greatest learnings over the years and practical actionable steps forward. Okay. And I brought in a friend and shame proof parenting expert, Mercedes Samudio for this course to help us do it all without shame, because we know the feeling of parent shame is a real and debilitating thing. So we're going to cover how to establish healthy communication, what to do about codependency, which may not be what you think it is so much more. It's all in here. And I can tell you a lot of my personal stories of my successes and failures as a parent, having done this five times now. We've also packed this me course to the brim with so many resources to help you parent your kids in the healthiest, most connected, non-shaming way. And not just non-shaming for them, non-shaming for you. So if you have questions about parenting your growing kiddos, this is your course. When you register, You also get access to our private me course support community of beautiful humans just like you. We're doing limited time pricing for the parenting me course. You can save $20 with the code parenting20 at mecourse.org. We're also doing a bundle deal for all four of my current me courses for $138, which you guys is half off. That's the most incredible deal. The other three me courses are finances, simplicity and habits. Okay. Your code is four course bundle, the number four, four course bundle at mecourse.org. That's mecourse.org. Okay. So that's a lot in the soup pot. That is, um, a lot of trauma, um, physical, emotional, mental, all, um, fear, recovery. So how was it? And you're in, you're in the education. So you're in the education world. How is it? How did you get 
to be a person who talks about burning wood. I let's let's yeah. the A does not immediately go to B for me in my understanding of this trajectory. And so was mm-hmm. art a necessary method of survival for you? 100%. What let's hear more. Through all of that fear and pain and confusion um, and the leap of faith, I found writing. I'd always kind of dabbled in it my whole life. I had my little journals with poems in it, but I never claimed myself as a writer until Mm. I accidentally wrote a book, like through my divorce. And, and Mm. to me, it's, it was the, the rising of how I stood up afterwards. Mm. And it was, it was something that I didn't even choose necessarily. Like I would wake up at five in the morning and it would just come out. Yeah. And then I would like go back to bed and I would read it when I woke up and I would cry because mm. it was like, did I write? I had to start signing my name mm. to them because it was such a divine kind of mm-hmm. thing that was happening, a release. And, and I read them back and I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. And to me, like putting it in a tidy package of words on paper is how I could rest. Mm. And so I just kept having to do it. And, yeah. I, and it was kind I of understand like, this. I heard authors say like, I had to like run from the outside to get the pen yeah. and the paper. I get that. Like yeah, I, I do literally too. have to hurry up and, and get mm-hmm. it out. Mm-hmm. And I'm not one that can like come back to it. It just comes out. And uh-huh. Yep. Out. Yep. Um, and so a lot of my poems were a rising and then, um, I had, then I ended up in with my best friend's husband's best friend in a relationship that was like, kind of like, wait, a, hold on. Let me, oh, okay. let different. me do that word math. I, say it one more time. I ended up with my, say it again. Best, friend's best friend's husband's best friend. Best friend. There it is. Okay. Got it. Yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, we had known each other. Like we walked down the aisle at their wedding and stuff like that, but mm. um, we just ended up spending time together and he became a catalyst in like a muse almost of, of getting my groove back and mm. feeling like, uh, alive again. Yeah. And I'm eternally grateful to him. And, and hmm. that kind of leads into, so I'm writing Yeah. and I share some of the, the poems with him. And he's like one of my biggest fans in that. Yeah. And so one summer he put up a swing in his backyard for me as a place to write. Cause he's like, you're going to, you're going to write that book. That's and, so sweet. But I can't even, I'm so dizzy. Like I can't play ring around the rosy. Like it, hmm. so the, it was spinning. Like stroke. So, like, is that what you mean? Like, no, it just like, uh, maybe, maybe you I just, just can't spin around. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you're like, this is nice, but this is going to make me either throw up or pass out. Yeah. So yeah. we're going to have to find a new mechanism here for my, for my inspiration. <laughs> yeah. so literally the birth of driftwood and she makes started with a stick that he handed okay. me hmm. to keep me in place. And uh, uh, should I wow. go into, should I tell oh, that? Oh, I, so, I, don't you dare leave it at that. <laughs> so, uh, if you hand me a stick, I want to whittle it. I need a pocket knife immediately. Okay. So he hands me a pocket knife. I'm whittling and mm-hmm. then he comes out of the shed and he has like a vibrating tool, like an etching. So I yeah. plugged it in. And I'm like, yeah, this is fun. Let me yeah. do that on all the things. Then he comes out. I actually have it with me. Then he comes out with a soldering iron, this oh, soldering yeah. iron. Mm-hmm. And I burn over top of where I had etched. And that yeah. was like, there was like a universal sonic boom of like, yeah. Like this is a thing. What happened? Mm. And I was like, I need to burn. I need to burn more things. So I'm like looking in the yard for wood. Oh my god. He gosh. comes out with a freaking chainsaw and slices. <laughs> is, this is escalating quickly. Slices. This is all in like an hour. The half okay. Hour. Okay. Slices a piece of tree from the yeah. backyard because he's mm. that he can do that. Okay. And I'm like, okay, what words? I'm gonna put the words on it. I'm etching it, I'm burning it. I have to uh-huh. go home because I don't let li- I live four hours away. He lets yeah. me take this home. Okay. And I go home. I go back to teaching, right? And I'm like, sure. 
what this like Jumanji drum beat of like, mm. what was that? You know, kept, kept. So fast forward, that was summer. Fast forward to Christmas. I was like, ooh, I'm going to make him a Christmas present with the soldering iron. Sure. Uh, I want to put it on driftwood. He's a scuba diver and loves the phrase born of water. So I was like, I'm going to okay. put driftwood. It's going to be so cool. I'm like, here, here. <laughs> I couldn't find any driftwood. I had such big visions for this. Yeah. It was just kind of pathetic. Okay. And so that Christmas, I didn't have my kids and that was hard. It was still mm. early-ish. Well, yeah. maybe not. It was five years in. It was a little easier, but <sighs> Christmas morning, about three and a half years ago, I was like, I really had a big vision for this. Can we look for driftwood here? Do you have driftwood here? Okay. Um in Annapolis area and yeah. we went Christmas morning and that's the mm. coast. And I was hyperventilating like, cause mm. it was covering everything. Mm. And there was a big stump and I was like, yeah. oh, this one, look at this one, look at this yeah. one. Like I still- Yeah, like, I have goosebumps, I have goosebumps. The look mm. on his face too, like I'll never forget the look on his face when I was like giddy. He just yeah. was like, this happened to her. Yeah. And, uh, so we loaded up my car and I headed home with it and I learned how to scrub it. And mm. I tweaked that for a year. Um, I learned how to bleach it, dry it, mm. store yeah. it, my whole house just, and, uh, mm. then it was like, this is a place I can put all my words Yeah, and everybody's words that live in me that I've read that I, mm. that I, just have literally built me from scratch my whole life. Like all the authors as a teacher, I love literature just, and the sass from Jersey and the mountains. And yeah, it was, they found a home. I mean, okay. The fact that it turned into a business, that's a a little bit of a different Let's move forward to that because, you know, this whole series is on, makers and creators and um, hobbies and pastimes that really innovative, creative people like you turned into a deal. Like it it started out because you needed a stick so you wouldn't spin and throw up, you know? And now (laughs) you're on my podcast talking about your business. You know, like this was a, this became something really important to you and then ultimately to the world. So can you talk a little bit about the audacity, if you will, to yeah. take your little like fledgling driftwood taking over your home deal yeah. hobby and, yeah. and and parsing that forward into something like legitimate and sustainable. And like you gave it the attention it deserved. Like you, you, you believed in yourself. Like you put your chips on you. Yeah. Oh, I, that I had the audacity. I, I, I still can't believe. And uh, so, okay. Okay. So I, there's a new little shop down the street a couple, three years ago ish. And all my friends are like, Oh, you have to go to Teal Eagle. You have to check out Teal Eagle. And I'm like, it's so cute. I go in and it's like one of those places you're like, Oh, the first Mm. thing I said was whose dream was this? Mm. I need to talk to them. Mm -hmm. In she walks. And it was one of my students' moms. We had just had a parent teacher. Oh, I love and it. So we got to chatting and I was like, I love, this is everything. Never, ever, ever occurred to me that I would sell anything I made. I don't know why. Cause mm-hmm. I was a teacher as a teacher sure. and I was a mom. I wasn't. Yeah. This was yeah. your little side thing that just, you loved. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, at the time I was making pom-poms, like I would just make little pom-pom basic yeah. things. And that was, I was doing. And Somehow we got to talking. I'll fast forward to she saying, Oh, you should bring some of that in. And I was like, What? Mm, uh, so yeah. they all sold. And she's like, We need to. Uh-huh. And I was like, yeah. What? So yeah. then little fractals of serendipity continued to happen from that moment. I ended up in shops. I ended up doing shows. Mm. The people that I met, there were so many connections that it just grew and grew and grew. And then I was uh-huh. like, I'm going to have a website and I'm going to do this. And I'm, I'm still literally in this because I, it became so big and so necessary to me to keep the words, Mm. uh, out there and get Mm. them out there, uh, that I ended up getting restless at school and Mm, I felt stifled. 
Yeah. And my, my, the book that I had written that I still hadn't like come back to, to honor, yeah. uh, I wanted to pub, I want to publish and it just got bigger and bigger. And I went to my principal and I was like, hmm. I'm restless. Yeah. I have this thing. It's like, I got to go see about a girl. <laughs> totally. <laughs> and I was like, totally. And I said, is a sabbatical still a thing? And she's like, oh, she is so supportive. And mm. I was like, it's not still a thing, but I, I made it a thing. I made it my mm. audacity. I'm like, I'm taking a, my own sabbatical. Um, okay. Also career change. So I'm in, this is my first year where I'm a full time. Yeah. And so I'm reinventing uh, the, the things that I loved about teaching, the pa- mm. my passion for creative writing and my passion for the words that we have on repeat in our head. Mm. women, adults and children. Mm. So I'm te- I'm reinventing the way that I teach. Mm. And, uh, and then also using the driftwood to give it art. Yeah. And uh, this past summer, I did a writing camp with kids that I could take everything I loved and I didn't have to do it in just 45 minutes before. That's TV. right. Mm-hmm. And I did it for four days for three hours. And it was like, oh, we have to go. The kids were like, oh man, yeah. it's time to go. And I was like, yes. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, the, the, mm-hmm. I do a confidence camp with kids and women were like, are you going to do this for adults too? Oh and yeah, so I did. Yeah. And I'm like, the things you have on repeat, if you ask a fourth grade class, like what they have on repeat, I did that once. And I was like, I had no idea if they'd even get the question. I'm mm. like, I'm stupid. I'm ugly. Mm. I can't even, I can't like even, I was like, something has to be done. And yeah. the confidence camp that I did of like, um, for them to have a place to not be alone in that, mm. like is everything to me. And then they take, so I, then they take the words that they need to hear. I am smart. I am beautiful. I'm enough. And you know, all those things like in their own handwriting and I burned it on driftwood and they got oh to hang it on gosh. their wall. And so that is what oh I'm building right gosh. now, literally. And the fact that, and, and mm. serendipity just keeps happening. These are the yeah. things that happen to me and I end up talking to you and yeah. I am such a like believer in, yeah. I always say, that's what I used to say or do say about Scott. Like, it, like I'm a believer in Jamie. <laughs> like, mm. Uh, it's just, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Can we talk? Um, I'm thinking about the women that are listening right now and they are makers mm-hmm. and they're creators. They're innovators. They have words and ideas like inside that are so strong and um, full of life, right? Just, can you talk, uh, this is a little bit of a philosophical question, but what it has meant to you, what, what sort of internal reorganizing has been going on since you decided this matters, this counts, um, this is worthy of my full attention. It's worthy of being honored in a way that for you at this point in your life looks like full-time work. Um, Mm -hmm. Just knowing that there's a spectrum to turning your favorite thing into something full-time. Yeah. Um, But what has it meant for you internally? Like what has this done to your heart, to your soul, um, to your outlook on life, to your perspective, to your sense of optimism, just all of it. I, I'm a creator too. I use words are my medium and I just type them on a Mac <laughs> Airbook pro. Um, but I understand their power. And so, um, I just would like to hear you say that for the people listening, going, God, I know that feeling, that internal feeling. So, uh, my first instinct is to actually not that I have a poem mm-hmm. that kind of encapsulates that. Yeah, um, let's hear it. Okay, really? Let's hear it. I oh, wasn't sure if what? this would even Read the poem. Okay. <laughs> let's hear it. Good night. So before I do like to sort of answer that in, it wasn't optional. Mm. And Elizabeth Gilbert gave me the term full body. Yes. Mm. I don't know, maybe she didn't, whoever it came from uh-huh. to get to, to it's not optional. Yeah. And I like to describe it as like the Jumanji drum beat of like, yeah, it won't go away until yeah. you roll the dice. And, and so, yeah. um, to 
for me to hear to, for anyone out there that needs to release something, mm. it is such a, that is the word, it's a release. And then you can, when you hear it, when you hear it from someone else, the things that you need to hear, yeah. you can rest. Mm. You can just rest. It's, it, it releases the power of it. And this poem, ugh, it, it, I'll try to read it without crying. Um, and it's okay if you like do my rising it's it it encapsulates the whole the whole thing and how it, okay it, yeah okay it's called quicksand mm. this this work she had to do she had to do alone her ground unstable and disturbed by no longer she had to let herself sink into the quicksand collapse with the weight of the words that no longer served her she had to hold her breath and stay calm and sit still, listen. For limits, barriers, walls, unavailability, her childhood, her patterns, her love stories. She had to let them separate from her cells, sift through the tiny rocks and shells so small they can no longer be recognized, strip them from her mind into naked and vulnerable, to emerge first, for this was the way out, up, without a host, without weight, rising, Suffocating, they had no choice but to release their grip one by one. First to rise through the tiny grains were chasing, waiting, failure, stupid, selfish, helpless, whiny, naggy, taller, smarter, stronger, prettier, braver, sexier, cooler, shame, not enough. These words to... These words given to her through speech or spirit that she allowed to stay far too long, rising with them the shame of allowing them to stay at all. Mm. I am not enough leaving last, clinging to her leg like a child, the heaviest one. She sat with it for a while, a staring contest through years of limitations. And when she finally blinked, it was gone. Once released, she felt her freedom rise like helium lifting her up through the broken rocks and shells, finally seen as one, creating beautiful beaches to rest upon, finally emerging into the light, gasping for breath, solid ground beneath her body. She was free, stripped down, exposed, skin raw from her rising, she was free. And when she returned to the trees, she dressed herself in lovely, placed flowers in her hair, let sensuality slip off her shoulder, slipped strength upon her feet, looked down at the solid ground, and finally stepped into herself. Mm. Beautiful. And so I burn, like, she dressed herself in lovely, mm. on Driftwood. And when people come to shows and they're like, oh, she dressed herself in lovely. And I, mm. and I see them put their hand to their chest and say yeah. that out loud. I'm like, Yes, that's yes. from a poem I wrote. <laughs> yes, mm, that's so beautiful. I feel like I understand every word of it, like every single word from the bottom, the sunken place, yeah. like all the way that like yeah. brutal climb out, um, mm. the freedom of it all. That's so beautiful. Um, where do people like, what do you do with your stuff now? Where is it? It's online. It's, you just mentioned shows. Like, what does this look like for you at this stage? Cause you're still kind of early in it. Like this is still kind of a, it's a little born baby. Um, and so how do people, how do they find you? How do they find your work? How do they order it? How do they get it? How do they create it? So Right now, um, I'm in Virginia Beach, and I'm in a couple of shops, but I, I, through my pandemic baby was my website, mm -hmm. and I'm still, um, because I was still teaching, it was kind of like a slow thing, and I keep adding to it, um, and now that I'm full-time, you know, I'm trying to navigate, you know, paying my, <laughs> paying my bills as a like now sure. I'm not the school teacher anymore. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Oh, you still got to pay your electric bill. Right. Uh -huh. So um, anyway, I'm, I'm still growing my website and I am planning on 
uh, having a lot more on there. Yeah. And uh, it's shemakes.art, which yeah. I thought was the coolest when I went to a couple years ago when I went to get the domain name and it was shemakes.com was like crazy. She makes dot art. I'm like, uh, duh. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Sign then, to take my money. Yeah. She <laughs> Give me that domain. From, right. Yeah. She makes came from just hearing like, oh, she makes pom pom. She makes poetry. She makes mm. a spectacle. You know, I just mm-hmm. felt like defining myself in funny ways like that. And mm. so she makes kind of happened. I love it. Can I ask you a technical question? Because some of our, some of the listeners today are going to be creatives um, Mm -hmm. in a a tactile way like you are. Um, They are going to make things with their hands and with saws and hammers and burners. What did you call the burner? The wood burner. The wood burner. Okay. I wasn't even that wrong. The soldering iron, but you soldering iron. Like, yeah. You're saying things that they're going to be like these, their, their, their synopses are firing because yeah. they are a person of like earth and substance. So can you just tell us, like, let's just say start to finish. Cause I don't understand how you do what you do. Like, yes. how do you start? What's the process that I'm sure you've had to learn. I mean, you must've just taught yourself through what YouTube, how'd you learn? I, I just did it. <laughs> But like, even like the drying process, you said that I'm like, oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know one thing about what to do with a piece of driftwood I picked up off the beach. Yeah. Um, So like, what is it like? It's, there's a lot of steps, which is kind of cool. mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. um, collecting is first like that. I I have, and I actually want to put the life cycle of my work on my website. Oh, you should. Yeah. And and I have lots of pictures. So that first day years ago, um, when we collected, um, you know, every time I went back, we would go driftwood collecting, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, actually the first time I went back, there was a huge pile waiting for me. And I was like, Oh, that's sweet. Oh my gosh. Right. So, um, he's become, Scott has become the the collector mainly. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. we went through a couple of years of like trying to figure out how to haul it like we would walk like miles back oh yeah he would have a bag heavier oh yeah and I had a bag like that I thought was heavier than me too and he's like Uh what what is this you know Uh but so to collect um you gotta know where and it was all kind of like let's just look around here and down okay like magical anyway so collecting then scrubbing so scrubbing Mm. was I had to figure all that out. What brush to use, what soap to uh-huh. use, what, blah, blah, blah. Um, and the hose, hmm. and blah. then bleaching it. That I learned on YouTube. I had to look like how hmm. to sanitize driftwood. Um, bleaching it and then rinsing it. And then I yeah. had to figure out how to dry it. I dry it. racks and it's just out in the sun in my driveway. People probably think I'm nuts. Like, uh-huh. So drying it, then it's got to come in the house now that it's clean. So uh-huh. half my garage is dirty, half is clean. <laughs> yeah. It's creeping into the living room. Like, uh-huh. it's like, what is this? Uh-huh. Um, so then what do I put on it? It To me, it's it's what I need to hear. It's all the mm. words. I'm like, I yep. need to hear this. Words that came and went through me. Words that make me laugh. More, like just words I love. Yep. So how I get it on the driftwood, I do all freehand. Mm. Um, the, the wood burner got an mm. upgrade for sure. That, yeah. that Christmas Scott had sent me a wood burner as a surprise, like rushed ordered it overnight. And like, so then the, the sad Christmas present had a real tool uh-huh. that I, could uh-huh. use. Yep. and I just, I just literally, um, I take a piece and it's like, I have laser beam vision where I just Mm. have the, like, Mm. I, you can just see it. Yeah. Yeah. You can just see it. And you freehand it it with like a pen. Is this what you mean? With the wood burner. I just go for it. Oh, you don't even do a template and then go over it. It's a first time. Whoa. That's like doing the crossword puzzle in ink. That is gutsy. Yes. 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 Sometimes I'll take out, uh, I have 11 by 17 paper. And mm. I'll just scribble it out underneath the piece just to uh-huh. make sure it fits. But most of the time I'm like, this will fit. This okay. is perfect. And mm-hmm. it's like, I'm like, I'm a spatial genius right now. Yeah, How did that totally. even happen? Yeah. Uh, I love it. Yeah. And there's a lot to, to like hanging it, 
and putting the screws in. I do jewelry hooks, uh-huh. Scott takes some that he's curious of what's inside, slices them, sands yeah. them, and they're magnets and they're, they're wealthy. They're so gorgeous inside. So gorgeous. Wood grain is everything. Mm-hmm. So it's all, yeah, it's a lot of steps. That's pretty cool. Um, I love that you describe it because as with anything that is so handcrafted, um, it has such a laborious process to be turned into its final product. It's worth the money. Yes. And so, yeah. you know, we're in a, we're in the easy come easy go generation where we just go get it at target for where yep. it's been mass produced. Yep. But I love this return and this honoring of hand crafted art and yes. it costs more and it should, it yes. should cost more. Yes. Um, Cause I'm doing the math. And just on one piece, what you just said, that's a lot of man hours. Yes. Like you just described a very lot of hours into <laughs> one, of hours. one product. And so um, I love the craftsmanship of it and the commitment <laughs> to that is not fast. That's not like a, I'll just crank these out in an afternoon. There's no such thing as that in your work. Um, yeah. This is weeks, Yeah. right? Weeks. It's it from start to finish. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's why like, it's such a, a slow process and it's nice. It actually like it's meditative. Totally. Oh, um, totally. And therapeutic for sure. Uh-huh. Uh, and that is why I also am glad I have the spirit of like the educator to, to also do the writing as well. Mm, so it's not totally. just, um, me becoming a machine. Totally. I, I was worried about that and it ha- that hasn't happened because I can still, you know, pass along the things I'm passionate about. And work this is like an obnoxious question and it probably doesn't have an answer, but <laughs> do you, do you have, or maybe it's just a recent favorite, but do you have a favorite piece that you've ever done? Uh, I do. I have, um, so one of my poems is, and one of the phrases I like to say about myself is she, she wasn't like the rest. Hmm. And I put ferns with it because hmm. look at that. I mean, look, yeah, at that. I mean, it's, that's uh, gorgeous. Uh, I, I put ferns because at, when I taught fifth grade, uh, the vascular, non-vascular plants, Mm. ferns were vascular but they reproduce with spores instead of seeds okay and that to me is like i love the little sign like taking everything Mm. from my whole life and blending it in somewhere okay how much do you love cereal and like not just for breakfast right cereal is a snack food and let's face it sometimes it is dinner food especially when we're taking care of ten thousand other things that aren't dinner but when we're trying to be adulty and take care of ourselves and do well by our bodies sometimes those fun cereals we like are not real winners here however you guys i recently discovered a cereal that is a much healthier option it's called catalina crunch okay it's zero sugar It's keto friendly and low carb, but it still tastes amazing. I have no idea how they do it, but it's working. Catalina's crunch flavors are the best part. They have cinnamon toast, fruity, honey graham, all the way to like dark chocolate, mint chocolate chip, chocolate peanut butter. And they are all good straight out of the box. But I also love adding some fruit and yogurt to the mix here too. I kid you not. Next to my bed, right this second, is the cinnamon toast because I had it as my little night snack while I was watching my show. Catalina Crunch uses real ingredients only, gluten-free, grain-free, plus they pack in 11 grams of plant-based protein and nine grams of fiber per serving. And I know it seems too good to be true, but it is real and it is delicious. So see why Catalina Crunch is the fastest growing cereal brand in America. So just go to catalinacrunch.com slash for the love for 15% off your whole first order plus free shipping. So that's catalinacrunch.com slash for the love. And if you're not sure which flavor to start with, try a variety pack and check out their delicious cookies and snack mixes while you're at it. So one more time, it's catalinacrunch.com slash for the love for 15% off your first order plus free shipping. Okay, one last question. Can you um, talk about Make Her Collective? Um, This is, of course, something that would be deeply in my wheelhouse. Um, this is, you're in my value system right now. So I'd love for you to, to talk about that space. Uh, it is 
I, I could cry just thinking about it uh, because it was a dream that um, Aaron, Kate, and I, Aaron from Blair Family Woodcraft and Kate from Modern Hoopla, we met through Serendipity, which has a whole story of its own. And we all started our business around the same time, about three, four years ago, and met re not realizing it. We, we all thought the other was ahead, you know, mm -hmm. knew what they were doing. Sure. Um, we pulled it off somehow. And after getting to know each other, realized we had been struggling with the same things, had the same questions, had the same fears and doubts. And uh, the Aaron and Kate had quit quit their full time to work, quit to do this full time, and had the audacity. So then I was like, I think I yeah. could have the audacity. And I didn't even ask anyone. I was just like, this yeah. is happening. It's not an option. So having that hmm. community and the there was ahead of me that that did it um and to know I wasn't alone yep when we we sat at my kitchen table uh, a year or so ago and had this dream of the maker collective gathering the makers that were going through the same thing we were going through yeah. and the that whole community over collaborate now collaboration over competition oh. yeah um, you know what I mean mm -hmm. and we mm -hmm. literally have built our building, a community of women. We just had our first retreat in Cape Charles and ended up in this like texting loop with the, with the group of women that were there. Yeah. And since then they've gotten mm -hmm. their LLC, they've sure. gotten on Etsy, they yeah. have their website started. They have, we got one, a business name and she's like, I, <laughs> and there were, yeah. We are literally cheering each other on and yeah. it's a dream come true. And we, mm -hmm. we finally got makeupcollective.com. We're starting our website and so great. We just want to pass it along and cheering each other on is yeah. everything. It and is. I love this. I love this. I like that this is an outcropping of your work and that it has a collective impact. Um, there is absolutely no such thing as scarcity in creation. There is not, this is a lie. It's yep. always been a lie. There is enough to go around. There's enough creativity. There is enough innovation. There is enough business. There's enough driftwood. Like yes. there is enough yes. to go uh, around. And so I hate this idea that we've been sold as women, that we have to fight for the only two seats at the table available for us. Yep. Um, I, I've said this, I said this recently. I'm like, no, no, no. We just build new tables. Yes. Like we, we host whole new tables. Yes. We bring up, we pull up as many chairs as we can ever grab. And, and they're turquoise, right? <laughs> uh, they're, turquoise. they're beautiful. Like, yeah. yes, I am. Um, I believe this in my bones. I've experienced it. Um, the power of what we can do together when we share ideas, when we share best practices, when we share what we've learned through failures and successes, when we share things like our salaries, um, when we share how we got our websites, all of it, share, share, share. It only multiplies. It does not divide. Um, and so I'm thrilled to hear you. I'm thrilled to hear that you're setting a new table for makers. Um, okay. Value. We're going to wrap this up. I'm asking everybody in the, in this series, these questions. So, so just kind of like top your head here. Okay. So when you're, when you're not doing your thing, when you're not burning driftwood as you do, hmm. what is your guilty pleasure activity to like, when you just want to phone it in, it's time to like unwind. Uh, music. Oh, uh -huh. music, I wouldn't call music. that guilty sis. No, it's not guilty. A guilty uh. pleasure, probably laughing like Deadpool. I love Deadpool. Oh, like I inappropriate. Love, like, like when it's so mean yeah. and wrong. Same. <gasps> Deadpool yes. is my favorite. And like yeah. Schmidt from New Girl and best. You know, The Office. Like Absolute I best. Laughter for sure. Uh -huh. Yeah. Kids I love it. <laughs> okay. Next thing. In your particular genre. You have to, if you had to just pick one, what's your must have like tool or a gadget or whatever it is that you have that makes your work so much easier than if you didn't have it and you had to like do that in a different way? Uh, I suppose the wood burner can actually yeah, I guess be so. it, right? Because that's yeah. how it's done. Um, so the weather burning uh, outside, because it's te the temperature is 
Oh yeah. An issue here in Virginia Beach. It's either uh-huh. hot or it's cold or yep. there's mosquitoes. It's raining. For Christmas, Scott actually got me a fume extractor so oh. that I can burn inside. That like is a thing dying. I've never heard in my life until right this second. That has changed my life. I can burn whenever I want. If it's raining out, <sighs> if it's hot out, if it's dark. Oh. For three years, I've been burning on my uh, on my back porch. Oh. I had a heater. Uh-huh. I bought a heated jacket. <laughs> I would like put fans on in the summer. Like it was, was it? Yeah, yeah. So now you can do this indoors with the fume extractor, so you don't like poison you and the children I hope so. with fumes. Okay, I like this for oh, you. I'm not. <laughs> God, I love air conditioning. You know. Yes. Or yeah. heat, whatever the thing is. I I just want to be in my normal clothes. I don't want to be yeah. in a fancy hot jacket. Okay. This is the last um, thing, Jamie. I ask all my guests this question and please answer it however you feel like. Um, serious, yeah. ridiculous. I don't care. <laughs> uh, what's saving your life right now? Mm. That is a big question. I know. Uh, my friends. Well, I can't just answer one. My friends, laughter, music, meditation, mm. feminine uh, embodiment. That mm. has, that's a big one. Mm. Learning that and moving mm-hmm. through some of the things I need to move yeah. through. That the, the too. body keeps the score and all that stuff yep. like that. Whole yep. that has changed my life. Um. Mm. The honoring my cycle and my productivity and learning that like there's so many things that have blown my mind that I think saved me all of it saved me Gabby Bernstein saving me like yeah there's so many things right now that it's almost overstimulating how many uh-huh. fabulous things are happening yeah um, so I'm, I'm trying meditation and, and like absorbing it is mm. saving me I love it Um, Those are all super similar slash identical practices and sources of input that pulled me out of the quicksand. Dr. Shivali parenting right now. Yeah. She has saved me in parenting. Mm -hmm. I had her on the show. She's fascinating. I know. I, I, when I interviewed her on the podcast, I like was so shook. I took immediately to social media. I'm like, I don't even know how to talk about the interview I just had, but yeah. I, I, it didn't even come out for two months. I just, somebody needs to know that I just heard like a bunch of mind blowing stuff. Um, yeah. She's wildly profound. Her book should be given to every parent. Yeah. Yeah. And Along she's translated a lot of those principles into like grown up heart work. Ugh, she yeah. doesn't leave any stone unturned. Uh, uh. Um, I love this for yeah. you, for me. I love that we do recover. Yes. I love yeah. that we build our own worlds, you know, um, when it, when they get torn down, sometimes through choices, not our own, we build a new one Yeah. and we follow what we love and we create with powerful words and this matters. I think this is what we're here for. And so I'm so delighted to have met you. Um, can you finally, and this is really important because I want everybody to see your work. Like you have to see it guys. You can't understand it if you don't look at it with your eyes. So can you tell everybody where to find you, where to follow you, where they can get a glimpse of all this awesome stuff we've been talking about? Absolutely. Uh, at she makes that art on Instagram and it's matched with Facebook is like the, the current day to day, all the things. Uh-huh. And she makes dot art as a website is the more um, static and where they can go to my online shop and maybe have uh-huh. a piece and custom orders of words you need to mm. hear. I love to do sentimental ones of you know, things that through your family or that your family says. And- mm. Jamie made a piece for me, a sentimental piece, if you will. And it is the almost identical cover art from fierce free and full of fire um, with her special touch on it. The same fonts. Um, I it's beautiful and special. Like it's just so special. That's, that's the only place that exists in the whole world. That one thing, that's it. There is no other one in the whole entire world. Of a kind. And yeah. that's what I love it too, because it it's a metaphor 
you know, she's not yeah. like the rest. They're not, none of them. They're, they're not the same. They're all unique. Mm. Well, I am cheering you on in every possible way. I'm so excited for you. I'm proud of you. I love your work. It's so meaningful. It's so beautiful and tactile. Like it's just gorgeous. And so it's going to be exciting to watch you just continue to rise um, as your work grows, as your community grows, as your leadership grows. Um, it's all going to sort of arc together and it's wonderful to watch. And so thank you for coming on the show. Um, thank you so much for bringing your art to bear on my community. And I can't wait for my people to come over and see you and see your work and get to participate in what you make in the world. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm going to go cry now. <laughs> Happy tears. <laughs> Thank you, Jamie. Okay. Oh, you guys, let the makers speak, right? Let's go, creators. Like, let's go, innovators. Let's go, those of you with a craft. Um, this series is so inspiring for me. I just, I love it. I love this conversation that we're building and these, these, these creators and makers that are, um, bringing their work to our community. And so if you've missed any episodes in the series, go back and catch them. By the way, subscribe to the podcast. If you haven't already, you'll never miss a single episode. Um, we appreciate our subscribers so much. Um, and if you go over to jenhatmaker.com under the podcast tab, we'll have this whole episode for you, like all the show notes and links to all of Jamie's stuff, all of her website, just everything. Um, pictures of her beautiful work. You're going to enjoy following her. Uh, it's kind of a, just an inspiring feed in general. Um, I have several screenshots in my phone just of things she's posted that like hit me like a ton of bricks. Um, and so I'm happy for you to know her and to follow her. All right, you guys, more to come in this series um, for all my creatives out there. Um, we're bringing you some just amazing guests. And so we're glad that you're here and we love to serve you. So on behalf of Laura and her team and Amanda and I, um, we love you and we'll see you next week. <laughs>